Okay, good morning, everyone. This is Chatting with Chap. I'm your host, Ginger Wade, and I have a guest on today. Dorenda Wilson is with me today, and we are going to talk about raising hard workers that show up. So I know you guys out there have been places where you've been in a line and it's taken forever. And you're like, why on earth is it taking forever here? And you find out that there's like two workers in the place that you went. Or like for my kids, they're at work, they work in an orchard. And um, like the the crew leader doesn't bother to show up <laughs> for work. And you're like, what on earth is going on? Right, exactly. Why are people not showing up for work? So today, Dorenda is going to share with us some thoughts about raising hard workers and work ethic and things like that. Um, Dorenda and I met down at um, HAV, the Virginia convention. So if you've been to the CHAP convention, uh, you'll know that Steve and I are quite busy there and don't really get the opportunity to enjoy it. So we go to other state conventions so that we can be uh, unknown people, <laughs> just kind of go around and enjoy the time. And we got to sit on one of Dorenda's sessions and it was so good. It was about high schools, high schooling and um, older children. So that was wonderful and good for my soul. But I got to speaking with her and um, we, and just in the course of our conversation, this topic of raising hard workers came up and it's so funny, Drenner, because this has been on my list to talk about on my show for a long time. And I don't know why, well, I know why I didn't get around to it because God wanted you and me to talk about it because <laughs> you have so many good things to share about it. So before we jump into that topic specifically, Tell my audience a little bit about yourself, like who okay. you are and, and all that type of fun stuff. All right. Well, um, I my name is Dorinda Wilson and I'm married to Daryl. We've been married for almost 34 years. We Yay. have eight kids ages 18 to 32. We have our 10th grandbaby on the way oh, yeah. and we've homeschooled from the beginning. So we're uh, over 28 years into our homeschooling journey. We've graduated seven we have one left at home, and um, I'm, I've also authored a, a few books, The Unhurried Homeschooler, which is subtitled a simple, mercifully short book on homeschooling, <laughs> and Unhurried Grace for a Mom's Heart, which is a devotional that I wrote for homeschool moms, and then The Four-Hour School Day, uh, How You and Your Kids Can Thrive oh, in the Homeschool Life. And so those are three books that I've written, and I have a podcast that I put two episodes out a week on, so we're coming up on 450 episodes of wow. tons of encouragement and for homeschooling, but also for motherhood and marriage mm -hmm. and parenting and all of that as well. So yeah, yeah it's wonderful. Wow. So good. And you know what I, you know, in the session I was in at, at HEAV, we were, you were talking about kids and, you know, and, and you and I got to talking about our sons, Luke, we, we have both have a Luke, right. And how that <laughs> name just brings about its own thing <laughs> it does and and you're not the first mom I, I I think every single conference at least one mom comes up to me and says I have a Luke and he's just like your Luke you know <laughs> it's that name the bearer of light you know and with it comes so many things you know it, I, I think I was yes. telling you this you we, we were like oh that's a wonderful meaning for a name and you're just you're yes. imagining all these beautiful <laughs> ramifications and then you get this like lawyer personality who's <laughs> everything's black and white and there's no in between and there's very yeah. little grace and <laughs> so everything yes. is you know right or wrong and so and that has its beautiful parts to it but it also has its challenging parts as a parent yeah. trying to raise that child but then of yeah. course now he's an adult and I mean I work the most closely with him out of all of my kids because he edits my podcasts and he's like um, oh, yeah. CEO of kind of our whole uh -huh. you know ministry and that kind of thing so you know it's it's a it's a worthwhile investment you know Absolutely. whether they're working alongside of you eventually or not and uh so he's he's a hard worker just like all of our kids and so that's um that's, that's why I'm excited to talk today about about yeah. work ethic because it was such a huge part of our our family life and so it's something that you know it's not like we set out to say, oh, we're going to grow kids with a strong work ethic. It's just my husband and I both were raised that way and yeah, both absolutely. are hard workers. And uh -huh. so we, uh -huh. we just automatically were like expecting our kids to step to up. Do it. And, at, and yeah, as we did yeah. that, we began to see, wow, this is actually something. And we're looking around seeing that, you know, 
most other people are not doing that and, yes. and, and what the, you know, you begin to see what the fruit of that is. And, and you as a, as a, as an adult are thinking, this isn't going to land in a good place and which makes you realize, okay, we need to make sure that we are actually being intentional about this specific area because it, yeah. it doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional. Yeah. So does that, Pat, do you think, you know, obviously you're passionate about this mm -hmm. type of a subject. Does that, do you think it just comes from your upbringing and that you're like that and you see that the world is not, or has yeah. God placed that upon you specifically for your, you know, like what is, do you yeah. is something that the world just needs to know? And you're the, vo yeah. you're the voice, right? <laughs> well, you know, I've seen our grown kids and, and how much having a strong work ethic has benefited them. And they have repeatedly thanked us for instilling a strong mm -hmm. work ethic in them because it's given them such an advantage in so many yeah. and so many opportunities that yeah. they might not have otherwise had. And, you know, we all want our kids to be lifelong learners. We want them to be resourceful, mm -hmm. but those things are not going to benefit our kids nearly as much if they don't have a strong work ethic. And so it's just an extremely important, it's extremely important for a successful launch into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. My, I mean, my kids, my oldest is 21. My youngest is eight. I have six. And I mean, already their work ethic, cause my husband and I are really hard workers. My mom mm -hmm. grew up in a dairy farm. My dad right. <laughs> was, you know, worked on farms. It's just part of our life. You know, it's our, yeah. Our my, my dad was raised on a dairy farm. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you work, you work, it's I mean, you have no oh, options, man. it's just what you do, right? Yep, so, absolutely. Um, and I taught, I taught that to my kids. I mean, mm -hmm. I may have used some scripture that mm -hmm. John Smith used at Jamestown to encourage my right. children to Right, work. there you go, um, yeah. But anyway, so, uh, and that has benefited them too. I mean, even mm -hmm. in their young lives, the job yes. that they've held, or even on the sports teams they've been on, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they go and they work really hard, it is noticed. Yeah. Especially it affects, today. Effect, it affects many areas yeah. of their lives. Yeah. Yeah, sure. absolutely. So in today's world, um, so many words are being taken and mm -hmm. changed. The meaning is being changed into other things. So we're talking about work ethic, um, being a hard worker. So let's, let's define that. Can you define okay. that? So that we're all on the same page and we know yes. exactly the angle that you're coming from. So yes, let's talk about I, that. I agree with you completely. Um, words are uh, and phrases are used in multiple ways. And so this is something I always try to do at the beginning of any of my sessions, yes. um, even on my podcast is like, let's, let's define what we're actually talking about mm -hmm. here. So um, I'm using the definition of work ethic as a belief in work as a moral good, a set of values centered on the importance of doing work and reflected, especially in a desire or determination to work hard. Right. And I honestly, as a believer, mm -hmm. I believe that um, work is an act of worship to the Lord. And I'll be able to kind of explain uh -huh. a little more why I think that in, in just a mm -hmm. few minutes. Okay. That's a wonderful thought. Cause you know, and I just, we just had this in my women's Bible study recently, and we were talking about singing mm -hmm. and calling it worship, right? Right. Oh, the worship part. Well, and that's, and I know that's not true. It's just our habit of calling singing worship, but that's not right. all that worship is. Mm -hmm. You're saying and working hard is worship. I love that thought and bringing that into the whole definition of it because mm -hmm. it is when we're scrubbing our toilets we can be worshiping right yeah absolutely <laughs> well when we're hard. well when we're scrubbing our toilets we are bringing order to chaos and yeah. that is what god yeah. does he yes. is a god of order the enemy is is chaotic he always brings yes. chaos and confusion and God mm -hmm. brings order and peace and so mm -hmm. even in these small mundane tasks that we're doing we are bringing order to this world that God has created yes. and this part of the world that he's given us. And so you know, we can see every single task as something that can glorify God. Yeah. And you know, that again is bringing order to chaos. I love that. I love that mm -hmm. order to chaos. That is so mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Oh, that's a wonderful thought. I'm going to remember that one. Okay. So, so why do you think having a strong work ethic is important? Okay. So like I'm thinking this is not just for kids, right? This is for everybody. Like everyone mm -hmm. needs a strong work, mm -hmm. work ethic. Right. So let's talk right. about why 
Why? Yeah, it, it's true. Mm-hmm. Everyone does. And one of the benefits of ha- of raising kids who have a strong work ethic is, is as we as parents, homeschooling parents specifically, we have our kids home um, all the time. You know, we can work alongside of each other. Our children mm-hmm. can contribute in ways that mm-hmm. are meaningful to family life and to maintaining what we have. But I think something we have to remember is, is to go back to the very beginning um, and realize that we were made to work. So God gave Adam and Eve stewardship mm-hmm. of the garden before True. the fall. True. Work mm-hmm. wasn't something that happened after the fall or it was a result mm-hmm. of sin. It was yes. something good. It was a gift yes. that God yeah. gave us. When God did this creation thing, he said, he, what did he say? He said it was, all of it was good. All of it was good. And so yeah. he gave Adam and Eve the stewardship of the garden. Um, it was ultimately God's garden. It, it belonged mm-hmm. to him and Adam and Eve were simply stewards of it. And so mm-hmm. if we can remember that everything we have actually as believers belongs to God, it all came from him. It is a gift yes. from him. And so we are stewarding his blessings. And so, like I said before, when we're cleaning the house and we're doing yard work, yeah. we're bringing order, but we're also um, showing a certain amount of gratitude to the Lord mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and actually with our actions saying, I understand that these things are a blessing from the Lord. And mm-hmm. so I'm going to take care of them. And so I want to read through a few scriptures that yeah, are absolutely. really wonderful to, to uh, talk with our kids about. There's a lot of scriptures actually on work, but I'm just going to yes. share a few. Proverbs okay. 12, 12, 24 says the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor. So diligence pays off. Mm-hmm. Um, it leads to opportunities that others won't have like leadership and influence and yes. influence, and it has to be worked for. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have to be diligent, but I look at this also, and I see this as a way of helping us train our children to work. So when it says the hand of the diligent will rule, but the lazy man will be put to forced labor, the child who's responsible and doing what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it, the way they're supposed to do it can have privileges. They get to yes. have privileges. Yes. The one who is not doing that does not get not. to have as many privileges. Mm. And so mm-hmm. this is important because our kids need to see a cause and effect there. And this, yes. is, this is part of training our children. And so uh, when it says a lazy man will be put to forced labor, when my kids didn't do their jobs well, I would give them more work because, yeah. I, because partly because of this verse, but also because I would say to them, look, my job is to train you it's clear that you're not getting it. So Mm -hmm. you need more practice. Anytime Mm -hmm. you want to get better at something, you have to practice it. So Mm -hmm. since you're not able to do this, these things in a timely fashion, we're going to spend some time doing tasks with time, with a timer set. Um, It'll be a reasonable amount of time, but we're going to keep doing this until you can show me that you're getting this. Okay. So second Thessalonians 310 for even when we were with you, we commanded you this anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. That's the one. (laughs) Yep, I said this a lot to our kids. And it wasn't like I wanted to starve them or anything, although they have gone without before. Oh um, yeah, and I don't think that hurts them yeah. at all. So, but well, there's wanted, fasting, right? It's no different right. than fasting. <laughs> forced fasting, fasting forced is that what we call that? So, um, <laughs> but I wanted my kids to make the connection that nothing is free. Work is yeah. required. I yeah. mean, the things that are free, our salvation is free. The grace of God that He pours out on us is free, but it's free because Jesus paid for it right? Yes. It's, it's been it was prepaid. paid for, just not by us, right? <laughs> it's it not yes, by us. Prepaid. So, yeah. you know, so I just want to clarify that, but you know, yes. it, you just on a practical level, if you want to eat food, someone has to earn the money to purchase that food. Yes. Someone has to prepare it. Yes. Someone has to, you know, so uh, work, we want them to know that work is required. Um, and we did not want them to take things for granted. Um, mm-hmm. Proverbs 22, 29, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. So diligence and excellence in our work will provide opportunities, again, that others will not have. I have seen this over and over and over again with our own kids. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 12, 11, he who tills his land will be satisfied with bread, but he who mm-hmm. follows frivolity is devoid of understanding. So in other mm-hmm. words, foolishness, okay? Mm-hmm. So laziness and only wanting to have fun is foolishness. And we want to grow wise children. So 
the goal is wise children. So that's part of this training process. Um, Ephesians no. 4.28, let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has in has need. So we work mm-hmm. to provide not just for ourselves and our own families, but so we have plenty to share with others. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so the, mm-hmm. I think the message here is everything mm-hmm. that we do as believers counts yes, because we belong to Christ. And so no task is too small and no task is beneath us. And I think yeah. that's something our kids need to learn. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 9, 10, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your mm-hmm. might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. So it's work is a blessing. So yes. do it while you can, right? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, well, and you know what? That's the thing. You know, as I get older, things don't in my body don't work as well as they used to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's exactly, there is a time where you're not going to be able to do what you once could. So rejoice in the fact that you can work and you are able-bodied to do things. Yes. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, again, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord. We have to remember who we're working for. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that's something we need to point our kids back to over and over again, because there are times that as parents, we're not always going to have a perfect response or give them as much, as many accolades as they were hoping for on a task. Mm -hmm. But if we can learn to point them to the Lord and that they learn to be content with whatever accolades they get, um, whatever encouragement they get, and that ultimately, and this takes time, it doesn't happen overnight, but that they have done their work as unto the Lord. And when their head hits the pillow at night, they can have satisfaction knowing yes. that they did a good job. Um, yes. First Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for members of his household, he is denied the faith and is worse wow. than an unbeliever. So this is, this is a way that we live out our faith. Mm -hmm. Um, and -hmm. another verse related to that serve, uh, Ephesians six, seven, serve with a good attitude as to the Lord and not to men. And, uh, finally first Thessalonians four 11, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. And, uh, a lot of, uh, translations say mind your own business or attend (laughs) to your own business and work with your hands, just as we commanded you. And when it says work with your hands, I believe it means just doing the work that's in front of you to do, you know? So yeah. these are just really encouraging verses. Ones we can go back to with our kids. Um, yeah, absolutely. there's, there's more there, especially mm-hmm. in Proverbs, go to the ant you mm-hmm. can watch. You could take your kids out to look at ants and see how diligent they are. And that's mm-hmm. what God is calling us to is to mm-hmm. diligence. I'm thinking back to the, the, the very first scripture you read and you're talking about privilege. Like when you work, um, mm-hmm. when you work hard, you get privileges. And I think what's really important for parents out there today is to make sure you have that discussion about what is a right and what is a privilege. You know, what is it absolutely a parent's responsibility to take care of for the child Mm -hmm. and what the privilege is. So the rights is actually not very big list. (laughs) I mean, it's not, it's not. And then everything else is a privilege, but in today's society, we're thought to think that, you know, it's my right to do this and it's my my right to have this. It's my right to go there. It's my right. Absolutely. But we are, we are in an uphill battle against the culture. And that's yeah. another thing. I'm glad you pointed this out because it's something that was going through my mind as I was going through those verses. I was thinking about how we have to be intentional not to over resource our kids with too much stuff, yeah. too many gifts, too many expectations. Um, you need to keep our expect our kids. We need to keep our kids expectations low no. because we want them to have something to work towards. Mm -hmm. If we, you know, if every time, you know, every week they do a good job on their chores and we take them out for, you know, a fancy coffee and goodies and, you know, that we're not actually teaching them real life. Yeah. I I think some amount of reward is good, especially in the beginning, you know, little stickers on the chart, the chore chart. It's a wonderful Mm -hmm. way for them to see their progress, see what Mm -hmm. a good job they did. It's tangible. It's visual. It's something they can do with their hands, but ultimately we want to move them away from needing rewards to just being able to embrace that feeling and notice that feeling of a job well done. Well done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's there, uh, honestly, knowing you've done a job well done. I mean, that's when you, you can accept that as your reward. It's satisfying. You are it's satisfied. very satisfying. And you're yeah. not dependent on your circumstances. Yeah. 
to give True. you joy in that situation. You're True. finding joy in the fact that you've been obedient to the Lord. Mm-hmm. You've done what he's called you to do. You did it with all your might. And, um, and he created us for that. Yes. And so yeah. when you do things that you are created for, there's a peace that comes mm-hmm. with it. No amount of accolades mm-hmm. from anybody else could even come close to. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Cause a million accolades were just like, okay, whatever. And then right. <laughs> <It's>, exactly. <laughs> doesn't exactly. give you the same. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, so are there, let's talk about some practical ways. So we're building strong work ethic. Um, it says, let me see, can you share some practical ways that building a strong work ethic is beneficial? Right. So, how is so this- maybe, yeah, maybe a better word would have been, can, I, I should have maybe reworded that. Can you share some practical reasons yeah. that building a strong work ethic is beneficial? Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go through some really great reasons, um, yeah. because it does have multiple benefits because again, this is God's principle. So yes. when God yes. puts something before us, it is always for our good. Always. We're always going to benefit from it in a multiple number of ways. Okay. Yes. So uh, when we instill a strong work ethic in our kids, we are also simultaneously teaching them to be resilient. Okay. So when our kids are, let's just a practical example our, our child is their job is to take out the garbage and sort the recycling. Okay. Let's just say mm-hmm. that's what their job is. Okay. Sure. But they run into some sort of issue or problem with the job. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they have a choice at that point. They can just not do the job and make excuses, or they can problem solve and figure out mm-hmm. how they can get that job completed. And so when you have a child who maybe at first, I think almost every kid would say, well, I can't do that because, you know, fill in the blank. I would say to my kids, instead of saying, well, just do this, this, and this problem solving for them. I would say, okay, the goal was to, you know, get the garbage out and sort the recycling. Mm -hmm. What's the obstacle? They tell me, I said, okay, how can you overcome this obstacle? What are some things you could do to actually get to your goal? So, um, Mm -hmm. so we're, and this also in that process, they're learning to take correction and direction. Um, They're learning that um, part of the resilience is just not having to have a reward. That's, that's a form of Mm -hmm. resilience of just, I could Mm -hmm. go, I can do the job and I don't need someone to tell me what a great job I did, you know? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So um, another thing it teaches is perseverance. It's right along that same line. I mentioned earlier, you can have the lifelong learning desire, the resourcefulness, but if you don't have a strong work ethic, it doesn't matter. And strong work ethic is that perseverance to keep mm-hmm. moving forward, to mm-hmm. not let obstacles get, you know, they, they're there. You acknowledge that they're there, but you don't see them as something that stops you. You see them as something to overcome. Yes. yes. And so as we've done this with our kids through the years um, and so much of it, like once they got a taste of that. And, and mm-hmm. some, a lot of it came through like just their own projects and things that I would, you know, that they were able to work on in the afternoons, because I always gave them pretty much every day. They had margin for self-directed learning and projects and mm-hmm. hobbies and what, I mean, whatever they could come up with. Okay. So a lot of that came from that as well. And, but it starts at home with us teaching them in these simple things, their chores specifically, I think is mm-hmm. one of the main ways that we Absolutely. instill a strong work ethic in our kids. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, but I watch my kids now and I'm telling you, especially the boys, I think, cause they're more conquerors. They, when they run into a problem, it is just like, it's like, um, <laughs> you've given them a piece of candy. I mean, <laughs> they just chomp down on it and they're like, okay, we're going to figure this out. And there's just all this far, this going back mm-hmm. and forth. Well, what if we did this? I think this might be a better idea. And how about this over here? Mm-hmm. And oh my goodness. And so they're just, they're constantly problem solving day in and day out. I mean, you know, That's so it's great. It's really amazing. It's so yeah. fun to watch that as, yeah. a, as a mom of adult kids. Another thing that instilling a strong work ethic does is it brings out heart issues that need to be dealt with. Okay. Our children mm-hmm. are born sinful. And when they have to do things they don't want to do, it is going to bring out things in them that we need to address, Um, sin issues that we need to address. Mm Because as believers, we never want to just let sin just sort of happen and then we'll never actually address it because Mm -hmm. that is a way for the enemy to get a foothold. And so what we want to do is we want to allow 
these chores and this, these, this building a strong work ethic in our kids to go ahead and bring out that, those heart issues. Like we, mm-hmm. I think easily it's, it's easy for us as moms to go, Oh, he just has such a bad attitude about this every day and like blame ourselves. Oh, I haven't been a good mother. What have I done wrong that he doesn't have a godly response to this. And it's like, well, there's some truth to that in terms of there's still more parenting that needs to happen. There's still, <laughs> you know, we're, we're still doing a job that isn't done yet. And that's why mm-hmm. our kids are responding this way. And so mm-hmm. we want to, we want to say, first of all, have margin in our day. Okay. We cannot be running from activity to activity and expect to yes. have the time Absolutely. to address these heart issues in a biblical way. Everything doesn't have to be a long drawn out procession. Mm-hmm. And can I just say that as well? <laughs> um, but we need to address heart issues. You know, like if there's a bad attitude there that needs to be addressed, mm-hmm. if they're treating each other poorly, because in this process, our kids are learning teamwork as well, because yeah. they're not only working alongside of each other, they're often working together mm-hmm. on certain chores and different things. And so and again, here again, this is sibling relationships. I have a series on uh, my podcast on nurturing sibling relationships. And I talk about uh, why it's important, um, how to do, how to nurture the relationships and then how mm-hmm. to do it through conflict, because at the oh. end of the day, it's going to happen. And so yes, we want to, be able to walk our kids through how do we handle that? Now, when I went into this, uh, realizing that I needed to do this, I didn't know what I was doing. Like, I I was just like, I just know this needs to happen. And I want to do this in a biblical way. So I had to learn right alongside of them. So it meant I had to open my Bible and Mm -hmm. I had to go and look like, how are these kids supposed Mm -hmm. to treat each other? Well, go to the new Testament. How Mm -hmm. are we called as the family of God? How are we called to treat each other? Well, it's the same thing at home. Okay. So our kids have to learn to be gracious with one another. They do need to call out each other in love Mm -hmm. when they're doing, so Mm -hmm. we can teach them how to do all of these. And a lot of that happens through this instilling a strong work ethic. So this all takes time and intentionality. Another thing that building a strong work ethic does is it gives, uh, gives us, it gives our kids a satisfaction, you know, um, it's knowing it's what they were made for. I love that devotional created for work. Yes, um, we have that. wonderful. <laughs> We've gone through that at least a couple of times. Yeah. Um, really good. It's it's really written for boys, but I read it to the whole family because it was just yeah, so good. Sure. And it was inspirational to me too, to remember yeah. that the, to, to be a good hard worker and yeah. set that example for our kids. We had um, a co-op class on that book. Oh, boys. nice. In junior high. Yeah. I love that's it. <laughs> that's perfect. Okay. Um, building confidence and skill sets. So as yeah. our kids, you know, we think, oh, well, what's scrubbing a toilet? What's washing a floor? What's doing laundry? It's a lot of things. <laughs> and, you know, it might sound simple and mundane, but again, they're learning teamwork. They're learning mm-hmm. um, what does a good job look like? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and can yeah. I just say, don't expect what you're not willing to inspect. So if you want your kids to do a good job on their chores, you're going to have to go inspect their chores. Yeah. Like yeah. I did this every single day. There was margin in my day to go and look at their bedrooms. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. Well, you did a good job on this over here. Do you see anything else that needs <laughs> to be fixed? Because I want to train their eyes to see, to see. it. And right, exactly. Right, and exactly. right there, they're we're building confidence, but we're also yeah. building a skill set, right? Mm-hmm. And all and and those skill sets just continue to grow. So you you start out with very simple things like taking the silverware out and organizing it into the silverware drawer, out of the dishwasher, mm-hmm. into the drawer, right? Mm-hmm. But they're organizing there. It's yeah. hand eye coordination. This yes. is something a four year old can do, mm-hmm. right? Um, Mm -hmm. so we're starting with those and we're just building on that and building on that. Um, Mm -hmm. another thing that building a strong work ethic does is it prepares our kids for life. Work is part of life. life. Always be things that need to be done that never offer anything except the feeling of a job well done, its own reward as Mm -hmm. a job well done. And if our kids can learn this, they will be much more content. Mm -hmm. We live in a world that Mm -hmm. is continually discontent Discontent, because it's trying to live life outside of God's principles. Even Mm -hmm. in the church, we see this Mm -hmm. happening. And so as believers, we need to go back to the word of God and we need to say, okay, we're not just preparing our kids for adulthood, which is what we want to do and prepare them for life in Mm -hmm. doing that. We are also preparing them for eternity. So we need to keep that in mind. Like this is preparing them for life. 
is important. It's part of the process though, of preparing them for eternity. So we want to make sure that we've got that big picture in mind yeah. when we're addressing yes. and, we're, and we're instilling a strong work, work ethic. And I love Theodore Roosevelt's quote, far and away, the best price prize that life has to offer is the chance to work hard at work worth doing. doing. And so what he's saying yeah. there is meaningful yeah. work. Okay. So maybe mm -hmm. your kid's cleaning the toilet and they're like, I did not understand how this is meaningful. Like this doesn't mean <laughs> anything to me. So we're going to go to them with the scriptures we talked about earlier. We're going to talk about bringing order to chaos and how, what if mm -hmm. no one cleaned the toilet? What if that oh. didn't happen? You know, like that Sarah, was it Sarah, Sylvia, Cynthia Stout would not yeah, take the garbage yeah, we're not out. Yeah, would not take the garbage okay. out. <laughs> right? So what happened? It built up. It took over. Yes. Bad things happen when yes. we don't take care, when we don't keep order in our home. And so, um, and, and just us even showing them gratitude, like we're making it, we're, we're showing them that work is meaningful mm -hmm. and we're communicating that not just with our words, but with our actions when we are modeling that as well. And we're talking about, man, it felt so good to get that closet cleaned out. Yeah. It's so come, you, I yeah. would be like, you guys come and look at this, you know, <laughs> look at this, look how good this looks. Or with a kid that did a job like that, everybody come yeah. and look at what so-and-so did. Doesn't yeah. this look fantastic. You know, so funny story a, a couple of months ago, and, and you might've, I don't know if I said this in this workshop that you were in or not, but our son, he's 24, Luke, and uh -huh. he was doing some work down in our basement and he came upstairs and he opens the door, swings the door open. And he, he never calls me mother, right? He goes, mother. <laughs> and I said, I was playing right along because I knew like he's, he's doing something here. I'm going to play right into it. I said, what? And he said, come and marvel at my work. <laughs> and so nice. I was like, okay. So I went downstairs and as I'm looking at all of his work, I realized a couple of things. First of all, this is such a big part of raising kids, homeschooling kids and building a strong work ethic in mm -hmm. kids is to marvel at what they've done. Yeah. Okay. It may not be perfect. We are striving mm -hmm. for progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had to remind myself of that because I'm a, I'm a mm -hmm. perfectionist and yes. it doesn't mean we're not going to give a little direction, some correction yeah. and all of that, mm -hmm. but we're going to also give some encouragement as well. And mm -hmm. we're going to marvel at their work. Everybody wants their work to be marveled at. Right. And yes, that's a beautiful yeah. thing. Recognize. So then like uh -huh. a week later, our son, Sam was doing some plumbing down there and he comes upstairs and he starts to kind of tell me what he was doing down there. And I just looked at him and I said, Sam, would you like me to come and marvel at your work? And he said, <laughs> yes, yeah, actually, yeah, I, I would. <laughs> That's great. So yeah, don't I forget to marvel it. at their work. And then Benjamin yes. Franklin, Benjamin Franklin said, it is the working man who is the happy man. It is the idle man who is the miserable man. Mm -hmm. And that is absolutely true. That mm -hmm. is, that is something mm -hmm. that is like, biblical, just rephrased, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so he did that um, a lot. Ben Franklin did that a lot. Yeah. yeah. He, he stole from the Bible all the time. <laughs> right. He's put it in different words. So we're going to give credit yeah. where credit is due. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have, well, my kids, you know, I can't stay on top of everything all the time, but every right. once in a while, sure. I'm like, that's it. We are taking Saturday and it's all getting clean. And Absolutely. Like, mm, you know, they don't yep. necessarily want to do it, which is a character issue. So you're working on the character issue while you're doing right. it. Res response. But there, I remember one day and we worked really hard. I mean, everything, living mm -hmm. room, basement. I mean, just all the things. There was stuff everywhere and we cleaned everything. And we all sat down, we were done. And they were like, wow, this is so nice. Yeah. It feels exactly. so good because like, like chaos to order. Everything was right. in place. Absolutely. Everything was clean. They could walk across the floor from one yes. side to the other without falling down, you know, or tripping on something. Uh -huh. And it was, they were, they were experiencing the satisfaction of the job yeah. well done. Yes. And yes. look what I did. Look what we did yeah. together. Look what we and did together wonderful. as a team. Exactly. And, you know, I think, um, making our kids understand that their contribution is important. Like yeah. it matters Absolutely. to the family. I think that's an important thing for them to know. And also like, I think planning sometimes a fun thing afterwards when you're doing a specific project, like when you do something like that, or mm -hmm. we would, our kids would, um, my husband would cut wood and the boys would stack yeah. it. And we, it'd be oh, like yeah. an all day mm -hmm. event. Cause it was for the whole winter. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we would do, um, 
a fire pit and hot dogs oh, nice. and s'mores and we'd sit around the fire. And so these kids to this day, we, we did that so oh, much while they were growing up. Yeah. When we have a fire pit out, they love it. They, mm-hmm. as adults, they just immediately start reminiscing about, you know, all their childhood and all of that. Uh-huh. And it's just such a cool thing. So, wonderful. you know, you're instilling a strong work ethic, but you're also making memories at the same time. Yeah. Absolutely. And those can be done simultaneously. In fact, a lot of yes. our best memories involved work because yeah. here's the thing. Bonding happens when we overcome obstacles together. Together. Mm-hmm. So funny story. Um, uh, you know, that airplane that had to land on the river um, back in the day, it was about 15 years ago, um, a flock of birds flew into the engine and in the movie is called Sully, if anybody has ever watched that before. But I mentioned that a lot when I talk about sibling relationships, because it's, it's overcoming obstacles together, whether the obstacle is conflict or work or a project or a goal. Um, it is, it is bonding for them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that group of people who were in on that plane, in that plane, when it had to land on the river, they all survived, but they all get together every year. Um, because that was such a bonding experience for all of them. Yeah. So I, I had, mentioned that in the sibling relationships, um, podcast series. Mm -hmm. And I had a mom reach out to me and she said, I've not heard hardly anybody ever talk about that story. She goes, I've been listening to this, this, this series. And I heard you talk about the story. She goes, I just had to message you and tell you I was on that airplane. Okay. I was like a homeschooling mom of like five or six kids. Yeah. Yeah. So it was her and her boyfriend at the time, now husband, um, they had gone with some friends to go to DC and I don't know, whatever. And so anyway, she was talking to me about it. She said, it's so true. She said, we have very close relationships with a whole bunch of people still to this day, almost 15 years later. So again, this working together is this obstacles overcoming together. Yeah. So it's, it's what bonds our families together. So working together is very valuable as a family. It can be fun. I mean, I think everyone thinks that it's not, oh, I would just want to have fun. Well, you can have fun while you're working. I mean, oh, well, I absolutely. come from a family of singers. We sing. Oh, yeah. We there sing, you, when, you know, so that's, you just, yes, whatever. You, yes, come up with, you tell stories, you tell jokes or whatever it is, you know. Put um, on some music. Yeah. You yeah. make your work fun. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So that is awesome. So, so many good things here. Oh, I hope you're soaking it in out there, mamas and dads. <laughs> um, so Can you share some effective ways we can instill a strong work ethic in our kids? We can see why, we can see the benefits, we can see Uh how good it's going to be. So like, how do we get it in there? (laughs) Well, I'm first always going to say, if at all possible, start early. Like start at a very young age. You want to shoulder them with responsibilities, age appropriate responsibilities as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Because honestly, that's the age that they love it. That's the age that most of them are excited about being able to do a grown up thing. And so we want to feed that, right? Because there's going to come a day when there's more resistance. (laughs) So if it possible, at all possible, start early. One of my favorite, let me see if I have it here. Yeah. This is one of my favorite. It's online. It's an age appropriate chore list. Yes, I have that of yeah. age appropriate chore lists out there, but this is my favorite because it's old fashioned and it's really yes. just black and white, simple, straightforward. Yep. And it is the Flanders family.info. So if you go there, you'll be able to find it. Um, wonderful, wonderful chore yeah. list. So yeah. um, anyway, and the thing that I like about a chore list is because is that I would not always think of certain things. Okay. I wouldn't realize yes. that a two or three-year-old can maybe carry the firewood in possibly fold some washcloths or set the table. Right. And so a two or three-year-old, so I would have guessed more of a four or five-year-old. So it Mm -hmm. reminds us what our kids are likely capable of, you know, obviously there's going to be a little bit of, you know, not every kid at two can do that, but you know, let's try it out. Let's see why not. And and then if they can't, Mm -hmm. then give them something they can do, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, basically we want to start early. Um, absolutely important to have chores. I had a daily routine for our family and it was more like blocks of time with these are the things that need to be done. And this is what each person's responsibility was. So if I wasn't home, my husband could continue the the plan or the older kids could help make sure that the plan stayed on track. Um, And uh, grab, you know, little ones can do things like grabbing diapers and wipes. And when they're doing that, 
don't forget that they're also learning to follow directions. There's auditory processing yeah. going on. Mm-hmm. Um, if they have any kind of response, they've got to, you know, funnel all that through. It's all pre-language skills, that kind of thing. So it all ties into their education. Um, but my motto with the little ones specifically, if they can make the mess, they can clean it up. So if you've got a a nine month old (laughs) that can pull toys out of the toy box, well, let's sit with them them and teach them how to put them back in Yeah, and it'll turn it into a game. And so, and then pretty soon you're going to be able to say, okay, let's clean up. They're going to know those words and you're going to open the toy box and they're going to, we're going to put on some music and they're going to think it's a fun Mm -hmm. game. And, you know, so you want to start early, but I will say if you are like, further down the road and you're like, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, let me just say it's never too late. Yeah. Sit down with your kids and say, look, I realize that I, we have not been doing a good job of instilling a strong work ethic in you. And we're really starting to understand the importance of this. Mm-hmm. You could take them to God's word. Some of the verses that mm-hmm. I talked about um, also start reading books to them about, or stories about hard workers or people yeah. with a lot of perseverance, um, biographies, mm-hmm. whatever, short stories about people who overcame, because that can all feed into building a strong mm-hmm. work ethic and, and just say, we're, we're going to, we're going to change up our plan to include more work. We're going to make this as, as fun as we can, but we really feel like most importantly, this is what uh, you all need to know in order to be strong, healthy, productive adults, because yeah. someday you're going to be moms and dads. And, yeah. you know, so you're casting a vision for the future. We mm-hmm. want you to be a good, hardworking daddy or a good, hardworking mm-hmm. mommy and be able to take good care of your family. You know, so we're going to start that now. Yeah. Um, remember to praise when you're going to sh- inspect their work or look at their work. Do that little sandwich thing where there's a praise and a correction and then oh, another yeah, and praise. Then praise. Yeah. So there's twice as much praise as there is uh correction, but there still needs to be correction. I know a lot of people are very like sort of on this gentle parenting path. And I think there are some good things about it, but I think there's some dangerous things about it. We need to be careful. Mm-hmm. Everything is not up for negotiation. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you're always going to have your little negotiator in the family. Yeah. Absolutely. So I, I, I would have to, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to look back at them and, you know, as they're trying to negotiate and say, no, this is not up for negotiation. This you yeah. need to do this. Okay. So um, I'm actually doing a podcast episode soon. I'm going to have Wes who comes on frequently an elder from our church. He talked, he's going to be doing a biblical perspective on gentle parenting. So I'm really excited about seeing the pluses and the minuses from yeah. a gentle perspective or from yeah. a biblical perspective. Yeah. Um, so um, I think uh, some other tips make work part of your daily and weekly routine. Yeah. So it's not it's not just taught. It has to be lived. Like I can't tell myself, Oh, today we're going to build a strong work ethic in you. No, this is going to be, (laughs) this is going to be like breathing to our family. We're going to get up every day and this is what we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're going to do chores. Mm -hmm. We're going to do yard work. We're going to work on the house. Now Mm -hmm. I had it set up so that chores happened, basic chores, just kind of maintenance of everything during the week, dishes, laundry, you know, sweeping, that kind of thing. But on the weekend, we would do Saturday morning was our cleaning the house time. And we always tried to plan something fun at lunchtime afterwards, but it didn't have to be that way. We want our kids Mm -hmm. again to know, like, this is life. If you have a job, you're still going to have to come home and clean your toilet. Yeah. You know, and nobody's going to sit there and thank you for it. You know, Um, so you, you know, and and obviously I'm sounding slightly sarcastic. We don't want to be like that with our kids, but at the end of the day, we all know it's true, right? Yeah. And our kids will eventually discover it, but we don't want that to be a surprise to them. We want them to go, oh yeah, I, I knew about this, you know, (laughs) so we talked about making it fun, playing some music, if at all possible, it doesn't always have to be a whirlwind of entertainment, but we try right? We try yeah. to make it as fun as yeah. we can, especially if everybody's kind of dragging a little bit, you know, like, oh, let's turn on, you know, something fun and, or let yeah. someone pick the music, you know, or let's, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to, we want to play this or this, you know, um, inspections. I talked about that. Explain. Um, I also want to explain like how we handle chores. We did not pay for doing chores around the house. Again, going back to your part of the family, yes. part of life. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. This No one's going to pay you to come home and clean your toilet. Um, mm-hmm. So 
we, mm -hmm. uh, and we also had paying jobs. We offered them the opportunity yeah. to yeah. earn money, but the deal was if you haven't, or you aren't consistent and you haven't done your daily chores, First. you can forget about paying chores. Mm -hmm. So you don't get to skip making your bed mm -hmm. and rush over to cleaning out the car because you can make 10 bucks. Okay. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And so we would have a list of ongoing chores that we were willing to pay for. I had a sliding scale. You know, if you kind of did the minimum, you were going to get the minimum. Yeah. But if you really worked hard and wanted to get the maximum, you could do that as well. Either mm -hmm. way, they had to come, had to take, we had to go, they had to come get us. We go look at the job. And I would say, oh, that looks like it's maybe about the low end. You know, it's about this worth this much to me. Yeah. Because that's really reality in the work yeah, world. Yeah. Like yeah. people aren't going to pay something yeah. for something that isn't worth it to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I, I, you know, so I would say, do you want, I mean, if you're ha if you don't want to earn more, that's fine with me. Like you've done enough if, if you want to be done, but most of the time they wanted to earn more. And I'd say, okay, mm -hmm. well, look at this car and see if there's anything else in here that, that could kind of bring that pay up more to make it a better job. So again, I'm training their eyes to do it. So see it. Yeah. paying jobs, and then that gave them money to learn to, you know, that tiny little bit of money to, to learn, to manage money. We did not pay well. I'm going to say that because mm, we were yeah. a family of 10 on one income. Yeah. We did what we could. And you know what? It doesn't matter because either way the scale shifts. The point is you're wanting to teach them how to manage their money and how to, yes. um, work hard and then go out for that paying job and yeah. do the best they can all that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and yes, I did use work as consequences based on the verses earlier that we talked about <laughs> often with our boys, it was about burning off extra energy. They just had copious amounts of energy. You've got enough yeah. to poke and prod your brother and needle your sister and, and, and bring chaos to our household, you have enough energy to go pull weeds out in the yeah, yeah. So there yeah. you go, 20 minutes, have fun, you know? <laughs> and then I'm gonna go out there and check the work to see if it, it actually worked, you know? Mm -hmm. um, again, pointing out good examples of a strong work ethic, an example. So we talked about books and stories and that kind of thing, but also like if uh, say the pruning guy comes to your house and he's pruning your fruit trees, um, you, we can point out how good this looks. We could take a before and after picture if we wanted to and just say, look at all that he pruned off. He pruned off all the dead stuff. And what's going to happen is we're going to have a whole lot more fruit in the spring because he did this hard work and he did such a good example of it. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we're going to cast a vision for their future. We're going to work alongside of our kids as well. We're going to point out how, what they're doing plays into their future life as yes. a mom, a dad, an adult, a mom, yeah. all my kids wanted to be moms and dads someday. So, mm -hmm. so I would just say, you know, if you want to be able to provide well for your wife and your children, you, you need to learn to work hard and, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so anyway, just kind of talking but parenting about, too, is that kind of a job you're working really is. hard and the kids aren't going, Hey, thanks mom and dad. Right. <laughs> hey, exactly. Thanks for not letting me go to this thing. And thanks for not letting me have a right. phone. And thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. And then of course, set an example have a positive attitude toward work yourself. Um, mm -hmm. We need to be careful that we're not murmuring and complaining about the work sure. that God has put in front of us to do. Um, how do we talk about it? What picture do we paint of work? What have we communicated to our children that work is? Do our, do our children believe it's a drag and something we yeah. just do when we absolutely have to and we do the minimum? Or is it something that we look at and go, no, we want to stay in front of this and look how wonderful it is to not let things go so far down, you know, down the hole. Yeah. Um, yeah. and you know, but more is caught than taught. Um, so we just, yeah. I think that whole idea of stepping back, looking at a job well done and, and mm -hmm. recognizing the beauty of that, I think is really mm -hmm. important. Um, I, so my last little story that I want to tell is my, my daughter-in-law who's married to Julia. She didn't have any kids at the time, but she went over to our daughter's house who has four little ones. And at the time, our, our daughter's husband had been working a lot of hours. And so um, uh, Julia, uh, Luke's wife, said to them, you know, oh, it must be so hard to have your daddy gone all the time. He's been working a lot. You must really, really miss him. She was just trying to be compassionate. And, and these kids turned and they looked at her and they said, no, 
our dad is a hard worker. He works hard so we can have all of this, you know? So clearly their mother had done her work. Yeah. She had basically said, she had pointed out um, in a very honoring way how, and, and something that could be spun negatively, she yeah, spun absolutely. it to a positive thing and absolutely. just said, you know, mm -hmm. And so she was doing a whole bunch of things at one time, honoring her husband, respecting mm -hmm. her husband, um, mm -hmm. showing her kids what it looks like to honor and respect, but also what it looks like to work hard. Sometimes we have to make sacrifices that we yeah. wish we didn't have to, but we're going to do it anyway, because it's for the good of everyone else in our yeah. family and everybody else around us. So that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? Hard work is honoring to others. And that's something that we had learned early on in our journey is, mm -hmm. is part of the heart issues with the kids is teaching them to honor others. And what are yes. ways that you honor others and doing this hard work and taking up your role in your family mm -hmm. is yes. honoring to others, it's honoring to God, but it's also Absolutely. honoring to the people who are around you. And, and that, Absolutely. you know, we're called to, to be that. And, and right. Exactly. You think about the new Testament and how yeah. God paints the church. It's yeah. exactly like that. We're all doing our part. We're not jealous of the others. We're not um, thinking that our, our part doesn't mean anything because, yeah. you know, I'm not doing this important thing over there, which is what little kids can sometimes do. They look at their brother, mm -hmm. but Oh, look at him. He can run the vacuum, but you know, they can't even hold the vacuum because they're too small, but you know, so they don't think their work is very important. And so maybe we have to show them how it's important in that mm -hmm. they, they are an important part of the cog and the whole family yeah. machine, you know? So yes. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. Wow. I was like, you know, scribbling your scriptures down all these notes in here. <laughs> so I am so glad that you came on to chat with my audience um, about this today. It was really Thanks. good. Thank you for um, having me. Yeah. So important. I just think honestly, Dorenda, if, if our kids just show up anywhere and work hard, they're going to oh. go far. <laughs> Absolutely. I say this all the time, parents, if your kid doesn't go through algebra one, but they know how to work hard and they show up on time and they're faithful and they're willing to work um, and they're willing to work hard. Yeah. I guarantee you, I, I have seen yeah. the work landscape out there having adult kids and it's bleak in yes. terms of employees. And, and so many companies are saying, they're saying technically, maybe they might require a degree, but <laughs> technically they're not. They're basically yeah. saying if, 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 you will show up and you will, you know, all these things we talked about today, because they can't teach that. They no. cannot teach that to their employees. True. They can teach them True. a lot of times the skills that they need for the particular job. That's mm -hmm. not a problem mm -hmm. because if they show up and they're respectful and they work mm -hmm. hard and, you know, all of these things that we talked about today, mm -hmm. the rest will come Absolutely. And, and the employees know this. And so your child I guarantee you will have a job and not just any job. They'll have yeah. a good job Yeah, um, because they will be able to yeah. work up because they will Absolutely. be seen as, wow, this is a valuable, this person mm -hmm. adds value to yes. our company. And so, and that's the biggest thing I think that uh, young adults need to understand and parents of young adults need to understand who've graduated and maybe they've decided not to go to college. When you go to, to, to apply for a job that maybe you think, Ooh, I don't know if I could get this job or not. The biggest key to that, that process is to, is to communicate to that employer the value that you have to bring to the company and how you want, basically how you want to bless that company yeah. and, and the yeah. things you're, you're willing to do and will do for them, because mm -hmm. that is huge right there. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful things. Well, so tell us how our audience can like connect with you where can they find your podcast oh, yeah. you know and, sure. and I do yes. I really hope that in the future we can have you at our job convention I'd love um, but to in be the there. meantime in the meantime where can they find you okay well you can find my podcast it's just the Dorenda Wilson podcast and you can find it really at any of your favorite podcast platforms or you can listen so it's on Spotify iTunes and a few others mm -hmm. um, you can also listen directly from my website dorindawilson.com um, I want to point out that on the podcast page on my website, there is a search bar at the top of the list of episodes. So you can put in keywords oh, and nice. episodes will come up. So if you put in discipline or you put in chores or high yeah. school or whatever, different episodes will come up. That's so you handy. don't have to scroll through 450 All of them. <laughs> um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of content there. And I think a lot of really practical help. So I encourage you to go there. 
um, on my website, DorindaWilson.com. My books are available there. They are also available on Amazon as well. So um, I have a mentoring course, an online mentoring course called the Unhurried Homeschooler Mentoring Course. And this is where I talk about what it looks like to take a simple, unhurried approach to homeschooling kindergarten through 12th ah, grade. Wonderful. So um, resources yeah. and stories and all kinds of direction and that kind of thing. Great. That's wonderful. And everybody, this is, it's Dorenda with an E, not Dorinda with an I. So Dorenda. Right. So D-U-R-E-N-D-A. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. Well, I am so glad you were here um, to you. share with these things with our audience. And hey, everybody out there, be blessed by this and share it with, with others who mm -hmm. you know need to hear this. I mean, I think this message needs to be out there. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yes. Yes. So share it on out there and, you know, enjoy incorporating this idea, moms mm -hmm. and dads of work ethic into the process of training your children to follow Christ in all of life. Because honestly, that's part of it. I mean, yep. she does work real hard, right? God created for six days real hard. You know, it's all part of our DNA. It's all that's in there. Right. So mm -hmm. Enjoy incorporating it in, and I will be off next week because it's Labor Day, but the week after that, I'm going to be on with uh, Tom Jones, who's going to be talking to us about, oh, kind of about government positions and your civics, your duty as a U.S. Mm. citizen, and how you should be involved with the workings of our government, and why it's mm. important, you know, who cares, you know, like, right. what, what's the big deal, so we're going to be right. talking about that in two weeks, everybody, awesome. so thanks again, Dorenda, and- Thank you. And we will see you all, we'll see you hopefully in a convention sometime soon. And we'll see everybody in two weeks. All right, <laughs> bye now.